Welcome to this video on clinical case discussions in ophthalmology. Today we are going to discuss post cataract surgery patient after a routine phaco emulsification. Before showing you the case, I just want to discuss what changes occur after cataract surgery. This is a normal eye with the lens in place and this becomes cataractus. This is the vitreous behind. And what we do is we go through a small incision, take out the cataract and put a posterior chamber IOL in the bag after phacoemulsification. It is important to understand that the first thing that happens after you enter the eye, that is you produce inflammation in the eye. The blood aqueous barrier is the ciliary body present over here where the pars plicata is. That tends to get inflamed and that tends to produce cells leaking from the ciliary body and the cells which typically leak are neutrophils or white blood cells along with proteins. So they come out and they are seen floating in the anterior chamber. They are signs of anterior uveitis and that typically is a sign of post inflammatory anterior uveitis. It is very important that every Anterior segment surgery is going to produce that, so you need to look out for anterior chamber cells and flare. And it is important to control this inflammation postoperatively because these cells and these proteins, which include fibrin, are that are going to cause formation of membrane on the anterior surface of the IUL, or they can cause the sticking of the iris to the surface of the freshly implanted intraocular lens. The second thing that happens is when you're doing phaco emulsification, a lot of debris is blown away into the endothelium and that produces the endothelial pump failure. Temporarily, it knocks down the endothelial pump and that leads to corneal edema. Here you can see this is the normal corneal thickness and here the corneal thickness has increased. What has happened is due to the increase in thickness of the cornea, the posterior curvature of the cornea is flatter over here. Once this becomes flatter, the decimase membrane which is present on the tight curved posterior surface of the cornea, that tends to cut lax. It, it becomes loose and it forms folds over here. Those are called the decimase membrane folds, which we typically see in these patients. And when the edema is significant enough, the endothelium pump failure leads to edema of the epithelium as well. So those are very important things you need to remember and this inflammation tends to subside after the cataract surgery is over about six to eight weeks and there are no cells and the eye behaves as if nothing has happened and the intraocular lens becomes a part of the uh, eye. We are going to discuss today a patient who had left FACO with foley bile IL implantation with 3GM excision. He had a 23.5 diopter Acrisoft multi-piece IUL implanted with an axial length of 23.55. We went through a limbal, posterior limbal incision, put the IUL in the bag and uh, there was vision blue used as well because he had a white cataract. So whenever you, these are the parameters which you need to see. This is postoperatively first day, especially in a white cataract, you tend to see less, more, uh, sorry, more corneal edema. But in this patient, we'd use vertical chop technique so that produce less edema. This is the area where the pterygium has been excited. And this technique where you are looking at the cornea through the light reflected from the iris, that is called retroillumination of the cornea. There's another entity, retroillumination of the lens as well. Retroillumination of the cornea, you can see the micro edema in these patients. Here you can see these crisscross lines. These are called the decimase membrane folds. And these are the, this is actually the decimase membrane which is folded over because the posterior surface of the cornea has become flatter. Now we are seeing it at a higher magnification, the anterior chamber of, of significant depth that is of normal depth. And here you can see what you want to do is you move from one side to the other, other side of the cornea with a slip so that you can scan whole of the cornea. The next thing you want to see after postoperative cataract surgery is you want to see the anterior chamber which includes the cells and the flares. You want to, this is slightly bigger beam, 
But the main thing, whenever I want to see somebody doing a proper exam, I want to see him make the light go to a higher intensity, increase the magnification, make a slit, make that slit point on the surface. The posterior slit should point uh, should be resting on the surface of the iris and the the area in between you see the cells in this patient he had two plus cells unfortunately we could not capture this on the on the video but uh, that's the reason uh, i'm showing you uh, i'm struggling to get those cells clear for you but here you can see this is the typical and here you can see this minor bit of flare which you can see there's not very significant flare in this patient's and usually in this and you then the next thing you want to see is you can do a diffuse illumination because the eye is very photophobic. So you want to see the next thing is you saw the cornea, you saw the decimase membrane fold, you saw the anterior chamber, you saw the pupil. The pupil is not stuck down to the iris because you increase the light and it constricts and dilates. That tells you the pupil is mobile. That's a very good sign. Inferiorly, you see I've given him as inferior subtenon xylocaine so you can see subconjunctival hemorrhage this is all very important and pertinent to write in the notes of the patient that he has a subconjunctival hemorrhage in this area and then you would go in and see this is the area we, we remove the trigium and we do it a direct closure of the conjunctiva and move up to the wound where you want to see if the wound is opposed there should be no gaping there's some bit of subconjunctival hemorrhage here the main thing which you want to see is, is there any iris prolapse? Is there any peaking of the iris? Is there any vitreous present in the wound? Or is, and the, sec, and the other thing is, at the end you want to check with the intraocular pressure. If the eye is soft, that means that the, that the, uh, the, the, the aqueous is leaking and the eye is hard. That means you've got either it's too much inflammation or early endophthalmitis which is causing raised intraocular pressure. If it's raised intraocular pressure, you will get diffuse edema of the retina. But if you have only edema secondary to phaco emulsification, that is usually present in the area where you're doing the phaco. So it's usually present superiorly in sub-incisional and in the central part of the pupil and usually it's not present inferiorly, nasal and temporally. So that can differentiate between a corneal edema which is secondary to raised intraocular pressure or secondary to and uh, this is the damage because of the endothelial uh, uh, insult by the phaco emulsification. The, the corneal reflex is pretty uh, pretty nice so that tells you that the cornea is pretty shiny. Here you can see this is the area. Here when you are seeing scanning this you can see that the slit is making an anterior part over here and this is the posterior part and you can see this whitening you see is present on the anterior part what that is telling you that the pathology is in the anterior part where the trigium was and it is not at the level of the decimase membrane here you can see those folds in the decimase membrane these are typically called striate carot carotopathy which can be graded as grade one two three or four severe striate carotopathy will need hypertonic saline to reduce that corneal edema this in the end you want to see if you can see the fundus through this and here we can using a 90 diopter lens you get some bit of view of the of the posterior pole and that tells us that the post post operatively our media is pretty well clear so the vision post operatively was 618 stride was two plus and there were two plus cells the intro or the iul was centered the fundus examination was normal Intraocular pressure was 19. There was no peaking of the pupil. The pupil was round and reactive and and um, and there was no iris prolapse. Those are the typical things which you need to see on post-operative day one, first week post-op and then last week post-op usually is six to eight weeks after phaco emulsification when you would prescribe them glasses. So that is it with the post-operative cataract surgery extraction so we'll be back with more videos for you in clinical case discussions thank you very much for watching